The past two days, um, myself, my daughter who should be sitting over here but isn't, she's in the nursery, um, and Helen Wallinger were gathered together with other members of the East Central Synod of Wisconsin in two days of glorious meetings. Yeah, woo! In part of this, this, this two days, they had some breakout sessions, and one of these breakout sessions was a panel of youth. Youth. Not youths. Youth. Right? A panel of youth. Members of our church. They gathered together to be there as a witness to those who were gathered as the body to do the business of the synod. They were called together to come and give their opinions on how the church could better listen to the youth and and use their opinions in building up of the church. The whole premise of the Synod Assembly was listening to the voice of the other. And in this panel, they gathered together and I heard I wasn't there. I didn't get to go to either of the breakout sessions with the youth. But I heard in one of them that in some shape or form, they were asked by several adult members that came to the, these gatherings. How can we keep our high school kids after they're confirmed? Do you, do you wonder that? Because when you're, you, we all know that when confirmation comes and you're confirmed that you've graduated and you don't have anything else to learn about the Christian faith and you no longer need to come to any kind of classes. Um, confirmation students, I did not mean that. <laughs> Just in case you're wondering, you're not supposed to think of confirmation as graduation, right? Because do all of us have all of the answers to anything? If, if anyone thinks yes, let's reread the gospel lesson for this morning. Jesus said, I have many more things to tell you, but you cannot bear them. Jesus said in our reading this morning, there's many more things I have yet to tell you, but I can't tell you now because you're not ready for it. None of us have all the answers. That includes me. You can ask my wife if you want to know that for certain. She'll tell you that I don't have all the answers. Right? Jesus tells us, and even the 12 disciples, right? That's who he's talking to in this point in John. He says, I have many things, more things to tell you, but you cannot take them right now. The 12 disciples, the 12 men that were handpicked to follow him and to be the purveyors and the, and the mission starters of the first church can't take it, can't have all the answers. Which is good for us to hear this morning on a day which we celebrate a doctrine of the church and not a teaching of the Bible. Today is Trinity Sunday. Please find for me, if you can, anywhere in the Bible that it talks about the doctrine of the Trinity. There's only one place that it's actually named. I'll give bonus points to a confirmation kid that can tell me after worship the one place in the Bible that the Trinity is named. It's a doctrine of the church and not a teaching of Jesus. But here's the good thing that we need to learn about this. This fourth century trying to understand how God interacts with us and who God is with us is something that we do need to grab hold of and make part of our lives because this is truly what the Trinity is all about. It's about living our lives in the understanding that, number one, we don't have all the answers. Number two, you've done wrong and you're going to do wrong again, just like I've done wrong and I'm going to do wrong again. But God loves you and accepts you and claims you and justifies you, not because of who you are or what you've done or what you're going to do, but because of whose you are and how much he loves you. He doesn't claim you because you say you're going to be better. He doesn't claim you because you promise you're going to change. He claims you because he loves you. That's what happens for Liam right here at this font this morning. He's named and claimed by God, a child of God, not because of anything that he's done, not because of anything that he's going to do, not because of anything that he could ever promise that he's going to do, but simply because God loves him. 
We don't have the answers. We're claimed by God and we're interdependent upon the Spirit and everyone else. Right? Because the Spirit of God speaks to us in many and various ways. He speaks to us through through us hearing God speaking to us. How many of you ever heard God speak? No, don't raise your hand. Yeah! How many of you have heard something from somebody else? Somebody ever told, tell you something? You should try to do this because I think you would be good at it. Uh-huh. That's a God moment. I believe that's a God moment. Especially when it happens more than once. Have you ever had more than one person tell you, you should try to probably do this because you really have gifts to do something like this. We're interdependent upon everybody else. Which is what this day is truly about. The fact that God comes to us in three entities, but not three, one in three, three in one, means that we perceive God in three different ways. An interesting story I read about this was someone talking about, um, as a three-year-old, they saw their grandmother asleep on the couch. And they thought as they saw their grandmother sleeping, that this person is Grandmama, Mama, and Susan. That wasn't her name, but that's the, you know, that's the name that came to mind real quick. Three people, one person. It's not three people, but she's known and interacts with people in three different ways. It's a relationship. And that's what God calls us into this morning. It's not about us looking at ourselves and trying to understand how God interacts with us. It's not about us looking up and trying to figure out how in the world that we can be right and be accepted by God. It's about us looking out. Because if we're looking in, all we're going to do is see our own problems and spiral into an endless... an endless vortex of trying to understand who we are and how we can be better. And if we continue to try to look up which is something that's already taken up. The vertical relationship with God has already been taken care of for us in Jesus Christ. When Jesus died on the cross, we were saved and justified for all time. And that vertical relationship is not anything for us to have to worry about. It's there. You need to maintain it, yes, in study of Scripture, in daily prayer. But it's not anything for us to be concerned about in the fact that we have to do something to earn it because it's already been earned for you. The the relationship that we need to worry about is the outward one. Looking out to the other and being Christ to our neighbor. Being Christ to the world. I have in my office several different versions of one icon of the Holy Trinity. I should have brought it out here with me this morning. At the bottom of it, it's a depiction of the Holy Trinity. It has the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit on it. And and in the middle of them, there's a fire pit with meat on it, which truly tells me that you need to meet God around the fire. Right? So let's have a fire. Um, But they're sitting there around this fire pit, and there's... Two boards, it looks like, running out the sides. But the most interesting thing to me, and I've never seen anyone else comment on this, but I look at this, this it's Rubelev's icon of the Holy Trinity. And at the base of this threesome, there's actually an opening. There's an opening at the bottom. Why is that opening there? Because God is not complete as three. God is only complete when you're included in that relationship. Because that's what the Trinity truly is. A a fourth century trying to understand and put into context who the Holy Trinity is and how they interact with our lives. I'm going to butcher a quote here, but some theologian said that in the fourth century, the, the common people came together to come up with the doctrine of the Holy Trinity because they needed a way to explain how God interacted with them in three, way, three different ways. And ever since the people came together to come up with this, theologians have been trying to explain it and making it muddier and muddier, muddier and muddier ever since. The Holy Trinity is not something for us to understand. And if you want to understand the Holy Trinity, look at the people sitting next to you and understand the relationship where you have with them. And that's the relationship that God wants to have with you. Be it broken, be it perfect, be it a a relationship in working. But that's how God wants to interact with you. And God then wants to take you and use you and send his love out into all the world. 
So look out to your neighbor. Look out to those in need. And remind them how much Jesus loves you. And how much Jesus loves them.